Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We are into the third week of our lecture and this week uh, we are going to continue with the discussion on probability distribution. We are actually going to see some of the most uh, important distributions that we are going to deal with. Uh, but before that we are actually in, in this particular lecture we are actually going to talk about sampling. And sampling is something we will see the processes how we draw samples from a population basically uh, broadly speaking and how that really matters when we talk about the distributions. And more importantly, we are also going to talk about couple of natural laws in this lecture. One is central limit theorem and another is um, law of large number. And we will see how the idea of sampling really matters to uh, when you talk about uh, the central limit theorem or law of large number which are uh, natural laws and which are really very important uh, because with the, these, these will have certain assumptions, some relaxations and we are going to see the importance of such laws when we construct the uh, distributions. Okay. Now coming back to the topic of this lecture which is sampling, uh, we need to first understand uh, what is sampling and why you do that. So as you said, basically uh, speaking sampling is like to draw some samples from a population. So let us say I have this big population here and I want to draw a sample from here, let us say. So this is my population and this is my sample. Now before we actually go, go more in detail into it. Uh, first we need to understand why do I need to actually sample, you know like alright I understand that I am trying to understand, I am trying to get some insight about this population, but why not just look at the population, why, why to actually draw a sample and you know try to understand the sample, right. We can simply uh, look at the population itself. The reason why we do sampling is that as such uh, getting entire data from the population is almost like you know could be very very difficult, it might be impossible in some cases and it is really prohibitively expensive, uh, it, it like it consumes a lot of time, lot of manpower and also the money of course uh, is involved. So to, to give you an idea, uh, every country uh, they conduct the population census only once in a decade right and rest of the data need uh, with the, where the government actually comes in and does a survey. So it is basically survey, uh, for example in India we have uh, national sample survey, uh, national family healthcare survey, uh, human development survey and so forth. So there are many surveys that is conducted to give you an idea how you know to what extent we actually do the survey. So in India for example national sample survey they, they usually for employment, unemployment and consumption round they us usually would collect uh, maybe information from around let us say 400,000 households or 450,000 households in a country of like 1.3 billion people right. So that basically say shows we only deal with a very very small fragment of the whole population when you are collecting data right and that is because it is kind of very difficult I mean almost impossible for us to actually collect data from everyone every time because people simply will not give data and this, as I said it is really expensive. Now we understood that uh, the reason we have to actually go for sampling. Um, now how do we ensure that my samples are actually you know telling the story that I want to hear uh, from the population as in the story that my sample is saying is the same story that my population would have told me, right. So I have to ensure that basically uh, that the sample is representative, the word we use is representative. Sample has to be representative of the population. The point is how do I ensure that, right. Uh, if I cannot ensure the sample as a representative of the population, so it will tell something that is not true about the population. So the whole purpose of doing the sampling would be defeated. So I want to ensure that the sampling that I am doing for the purpose I am doing that is actually hold true. Now to actually understand how we um, you know go to go from sample to population or how we ensure this representativeness we have different types of sampling and it is a good idea uh, I think to actually start with those different ideas of sampling and see how the samplings, the different sampling techniques are actually talking about different things. So let us say the first broad category of sampling is one is random sampling and another is non-random sampling, okay, non-random sampling. 
Now, I will start with non-random sampling, okay, just to give you an idea um, what is not a good sampling technique. Non-random sampling is usually is not the best technique, usually we consider random sampling as a better technique. So we will try to understand, it is like trying to understand the light and it is, you know, in the absence of darkness. So we first explain the darkness, we will see what are the, what are the difficulties and challenges involved with non-random sampling and from there we will get to random sampling. So let me uh, give you a couple of examples to explain what is non-random sampling. So this is one problem that you often see among our students. Let us say we call it convenience sampling. So I will just explain that convenience sampling. So usually we give projects to our students and uh, where they need to do some sort of survey, they need to understand the let us say market pulse, let us say they want to understand uh, you know people's uh, the choice of people uh, between online and offline offline. Uh, uh, market when they are going to buy, let us say, some shoes, okay. Now, what are students usually do? So, they will uh, float a questionnaire, they will, they will have a questionnaire, they will float that questionnaire around uh, maybe among their friends or their family or their past employee, a past uh, organization or their childhood friends, whichever network they are active in. So, they will kind of uh, share those questionnaire into the, among those people or somebody can also go to LinkedIn. So, again, that is a network that he has built over time. So, it is basically depending he on his or her own convenience. So, I know these people, I am actually surveying these people, right. So, this is what we call convenience sampling. Now, the example I have given that let us say the behavior of let us say, you know, like your regular use uh, crock shoe purchase or some sort of, you know, uh, like sandal you, you want to buy. Now, there are people, you know, like different people actually may have very different choice. So, for, for a person who, who really is, you know, occupied with so many different works, so he might simply not have enough time to go to the shop and actually buy a regular home based used uh, sandal or crock shoe. So, he can simply just go online and buy it, right. Uh, whereas, in a rural setting perhaps or, you know, like people where people are more used to go to the brick and mortar shops and they are not yet uh, have enough faith in the online market because they might feel that, you know, this, this online companies might have been cheating them. So, there are so many different reasons why people may not just go to online and uh, depending on the samples which you have chosen, it can actually tell different stories. So, suppose if the the, this, this, the student, he is coming from an urban setup, his friends and families and you know uh, peers, they are all in an urban setup. So, then what will happen is we are going to see something that is basically a totally representative of a group of people which is which is actually not talking about the entire population. So, here so, let us say these samples, they are basically rich people sample and here it might be a poor people samples, right. Here it might be a sample of middle class, okay. So, all these different types of, you know, combinations or the compositions we have within that population, if I end up picking a particular group, then uh, it will tell a story about that group. It, it will not talk about the whole population. So, that is a problem. So, then it is not representative. The convenience sampling, there is a reason it is not representative, okay. Now, I will give you another example and it is exactly opposite to convenience sampling because in convenience sampling what you are doing is you are actually, you know, the researcher himself or herself is going out to people and deciding who is going to be in his or her sample set, right. And that this one is called voluntary sampling. Here, you are actually allowing the participants to voluntarily come and be a part of your survey, okay. So, here what people are doing, the, your, the candidates who are interested to be a part of your survey, they are actually self-selecting themselves. The word is self-select, self-selecting themselves, okay, self-selection. So, they are deciding to be in that uh, group. Now, who are the people who will uh, decide to be in your group and depending on who are the people who actually wants to be a part of your survey, that can actually, to, you know, give you a story which is, which perhaps very, very far from the truth and I can give you an example. Let us say, uh, let us say you want to actually understand how busy people are uh, on, on, you know, in, in New York City at 10 a.m. in the morning, right, say on, on Monday morning and you decided to, let us say, 
you know, stand next to a corner and you saw all the people going and you sort of ask people whether, you know, they want to participate in a survey, you want to understand if they're really busy, you know, on a, on a Monday morning, 10 a.m. Now, most people say, no, I, I really have some work, I can really, you know, participate in your survey. And some people might just come in and they'll say, yeah, I can definitely, you know, talk to you for a couple of minutes. And they will tell, they'll tell you that, no, perhaps Sunday is a very relaxed day for me. I just, you know, go around, I have nothing much to do. So the thing is, the people who really don't have much to do, they will come and actually answer you, right? And that is the reason, the, what will happen is, you will get a picture that Sunday, uh, Monday morning, 10 a.m., New York City, is really, really, you know, relaxing. I mean, people are, people are really not that busy, right? So that is actually going to give you a completely, completely distorted picture just because the people who have self-selected themselves, they perhaps are the people who really don't have much work. The rest of the people are actually really, really busy. So then you can see how both this convenience sampling or voluntary sampling could be really misleading, okay? And that is the reason we prefer a sampling called random sampling, okay? And I'm just going to explain what is random sampling. Uh, and before I actually define it, random sampling, I'll talk about the techniques and then we'll, when you explain all the techniques, we'll explain what is random sampling, okay? We'll go get into the theory part after we, have, after we see how it is done. So there are different ways of doing it. The fundamental concept remains the same, that, but there are different ways of doing it. The first technique that I'll talk about, it is like well-established, economists have been using it, statisticians have been using it for very long, and that's basically random number table random number table, random number table, okay. And I'm, I'm, I've actually got a random number table for you here. So you can just simply uh, search random number table in Google and you'll find these tables available there. So this is a table and I'll just uh, explain in a while, you know, what this table is and how that is uh, important, how that is helpful uh, for ensuring my sample is random. Let's say, uh, in our MBA program, we have 60 students and we have suddenly recently launched a program called, let's say, you know, like Python Bootcamp. And I want to see, let's say, let's, let's say once they get into the job market, I want to see how this Python Bootcamp is going to help them in getting a better, better salary. I mean, that's what I, my research objective is and I'm told that I need to ensure that there is no, you know, bias in the selection of samples and that is why I have to select random sample, okay? So that's what I'm told. Now, I'm also told, let's say I don't know anything about random sample, but I'm told that, you know what, you can actually use this random number table and there is a way that you can ensure how you can have the sample which is random. So the procedure will go like this. So first, let's say there are 60 students and let's say I have to choose 30. 30 among them, okay? So to do, basically to use a random number table, I'll just lay down, lay down the steps here. So first, all the observations you have, the entire population, so here my population is my classroom, which is 60. So entire population has to be ranked or has to be assigned a particular number, okay? So numbering, let's say, numbering all, you know, units, let's say. So here I, I number all the units, all the students, and let's say I uh, number them using their roll number, let's say. So I have a number 1 to 60, okay? Now second, I will go to, the, go to this random number table here and what I will do is I will actually decide how many numbers I need to take. So basically I can take, let's say, three numbers, let's say I can take this three numbers or I can take, let's say, only two numbers or I can, or I can let's say, start from here with three number or I can start from there with two numbers. So there are all these possibilities are there, right? So I need to decide what I'm supposed to do here. So since my, I have my, my number of students are 60, which is a two, two digit number, so I'll only select, I'll perhaps is a better strategy to take two digit numbers from the random number table. Now, so, to do that, perhaps it's a better idea when I select 1 to 60 to give a number 0, 1. So, basically the numbers are going to be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, so forth, 
into 60. Okay, so all the numbers there will be two digits. Now, once it is done from in the random number table, what we have to do? We have to select two numbers, and to select two numbers, we we can actually initiate from any point. So I can write as a random initialization. So what it means is, I can just start from any random point. Let's say I want to start from maybe the row number twelve and column number this uh, five six. Okay, so row number twelve, column number five six is what is this number? Fifty nine, eighty nine. It's not very clear. Let's say this is this is eighty nine. Let's say, okay. So first I get eighty nine, then I get thirty two. Then I get fifty-one. Then I get fifteen. Then I get twenty-seven. Then I get twenty-one. Then I get zero zero. Then I get three three. So remember, I am taking two numbers at a time. Okay. Then I get ninety-three. Then I get zero three. Then I get ninety-seven. Then I get thirteen. Then I get four zero. Then I get twelve. Okay. So the idea here is, we will take those individuals who are the numbers. These numbers. Are same as a roll number. Okay, so that means in this selection procedure, I have to ensure that any number that is below one or below above sixty, we exclude those numbers. Okay, so zero zero will be excluded. Number below zero one or number above sixty are to be excluded. Okay. Because uh, we don't simply have those roll numbers present in our sample in our entire population, so then uh, what we'll select here is that we'll select 32 roll number 32, roll number 32, roll roll number so roll number 89 is not going to be a part of it because 89 is above 60, roll number 51 is going to be a part of it, roll number 15 is going to be a part of it, roll number 27 is going to be part of it, roll number 21 is going to be part of it, zero zero absolutely no point. Thirty-three, of course. Ninety-three is not because there is no ninety-three. There we can have zero three. Ninety-seven is not. Thirteen is. Forty is. Twelve is, and so forth. So you can have. You can if you want more students, which you want. So you can go to the next uh, line, and you can keep on selecting like this. You can also have repetitions. So for example, you can have thirteen twice. Perhaps we have to see thirteen. You know, it might appear again. And in those cases, you have to drop those numbers, right? Okay, so that is how you basically select uh, your your you know individuals using random number table. So it's absolutely that the your roll number and this random number table. It is abs there is no correlation, no nowhere they came from the same source. And since the numbers are already there, and you are using it you know that way, so you can basically. Select the individuals. Okay. Select the individuals. Basically, basically you, you drop the drop the repetitions, drop the repetitions, of course, and you create the final selection. Final final selection. So we try to be we try to ensure. That there is there is no way that there could be any bias from the researcher or from any other source when you are selecting individuals because that is the only way we can ensure some randomness. Okay, so this is one procedure that that people have been using for long. But once we have Excel available with us, there are other so relatively easier way of doing it. So let me just show you how using Excel we can actually create some random numbers. Okay, let me just show. A Google spreadsheet, and I was just typing down this. So there is a function uh, in Excel. So there is a function rand, and there is another function rand between. So let me first start with rand between. Rand between. Rand between. So the idea of rand between is that it will create random number between two whatever number upper upper limit and lower limit that you provide. Let's say. I provide one to sixty, so it will create random number between one to sixty. So let me first do that. One, two, sixty, and I see what forty-five. Okay, forty-five. So it will include both one and sixty, 
uh, for rand betweens and it will it can also repeat uh, the same number twice like we have seen previously so and you can see 60 40 50 42 23 38 60 15 36 54 52 4 18 16 35 6 15 16 so basically let us say you want to select let us say not 60 but 10 let us say and then you will end up selecting uh, roll 60, 40 let me actually write down looking at this table. So, I will just take the first 10 or I can also decide to start from here it is totally up to my decision my choice I can start from column uh, row number 13 or I can start from row number 8 whichever way I want. So, let us say I start from row number 13 and I go from here. So, 3. So, I will have rand between function. So, this is the second way of doing rand between here I will have a okay, this is my b. So, if I use rand between function I will have let us say I have to ensure I, I have to basically the upper limit and lower limit I have to give and since there could be rep repetitions. So, always choose sort of more number of observation more number of observation than required than required because I might have to drop some some numbers. So, if I just go back to the table and let us say I want to start from here. So, let us say I want to I want 10 students. So, 3, 8, 60, 15 let me just write down 3, 8 again what is that 3, 8, 60, 15. 60, 15, 36, uh, 54, 54, 4, 36, 54, 54, 4 and then I have two more number uh, 18, 16, 18, 16, 18, 16. So, incidentally we do not have any uh, repetition, but there could be repetitions. Okay. So, you can basically, so basically you can random initiate here, random initialization just like before and we can get all this different uh, you know you can get a final list of candidates that you want to actually deal with. Okay. So, this is uh, how you use rand between uh, this, this could be a very simple way uh, you can actually you can actually what you can do is you know the perhaps instead of doing a, a, all these things you can simply write down the name of the students on on a list on a list basically and you can like you can you can create like small coupons okay so everywhere you can just write the numbers 56 25 13 02 maybe you know 49 and so forth and you fold them and like your lottery you just you know like shuffle them well inside a bowl and then you decide to choose let's say Ten of them. Okay, so that's that's the that's another way of, of course, randomizing. So you can see all in all the processes we're trying to see that when you are choosing the individuals, we really do not have any hand in that. Really, it's just happening uh, on its own. It's just happening as as like a natural choice. Okay. Now there is another uh, way of doing it, and that's basically using the function rand. And here we simply don't write anything. So, how we can do it is let me actually go back and let me actually write down rand. So, what it will do is you just write rand and then create an empty sort of function here and what you will get is these numbers. Okay, so, all the numbers you get here. Okay. So, perhaps it is a better idea if we can you know like we did for random number table we can actually create something similar to that. So, here we can create completely completely random number table and here also like the previous one we can actually see the numbers here 0 6 oops or here 0, 0 4 57 the 65 and so forth just the way you basically create a random number table for yourself using the rand function and you can actually use that. Now, we are almost uh, you know finishing the talk on 
on this random sampling and I am going to go to the theory part in the next lecture. But before I go there, uh, there are few things we perhaps need to just mention is that uh, it could be I have taken uh, examples where I am taking only 2 digits uh, for example the roll number of students but it could be like 3 digit, 4 digit, 5 digit. So then what do you do usually you actually take something like something like maybe you know if it is a 5 digit thing you can take 0000001 you know 0 1 0 like if it is 10 if it is 11 0 0 0 1 1 something like that. So, you basically ensure that the length of the numbers are going to be constant you basically pick the same number of uh, you know digits whenever you pick the numbers depending on how many numbers you need ok. So, if, if you know there are this, that many numbers so you have to sort of ensure that you maintain the consistency. Okay, so, with this uh, we will end the lecture, uh, we will we have basically discussed about uh, we sort of introduced sampling in this lecture, we talked about you know the non random sampling first and then we have spoken about the techniques of random sampling and we in the next lecture we are going to talk about you know different types of random sampling and you know like you know how they are different from each other and uh, you know particularly we will emphasize what is simple random sampling. With this we end the lecture here, thank you.